The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Fastest. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy and Alessia. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Is this thing on? Oh my God. (laughs) Are we recording? So I began talking about something and then all of a sudden I realized I wasn't recording. At least I noticed uh, 30 seconds in and not, uh, you know. 50 minutes. Yeah. So. So you made a list. Let's go back. All right, all right, all right. All right. Take two. Take two. So I've been working on being more organized lately. And let's compare me being more organized to running a marathon and then tripping at the finish line on the sixth task, but somehow winning the marathon. So what happened was I had all these things I needed to do in the last week. Did them. Last thing was tax return. So I had to hit up my old radio job, hit up my old boss, blah, blah, blah. So I get the login to ADP. I get my W-2. Everything's good. I schedule an appointment for H&R Block. And I go to H&R Block today. And it was a complete, do you know what the Mandela effect is? Where like people throughout the years have thought things. Yes, that aren't yes. Tr- like the butterfly effect. I had that. Okay. I walk in, I go, hey, I'm, I'm here for my 10 a.m. appointment. And immediately when I walked in, I could tell, the, like it was, it's always like a boomer old woman. She was nice. Her name was Myra. She was excellent. She got it done in 20 minutes. But she comes to the front because it makes the noise, the door goes, doo, 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 and then they know a person's there. And she goes, can I help you? And I immediately, I'm like, um, like I'm here for the 10 a.m. appointment. She's like, okay, sit down for a second. And she comes back two minutes later. She's like, I don't see an appointment. And I was like, oh, yeah, I uh, put it for 10 a.m., you know. And then she was like, I don't see it, but just wait 10 minutes. I'll get done with this person, and then I'll help you out. I go, okay, cool. So I go on my iPhone and I go through my old messages, which I don't know why I would delete a message about a tax appointment. I don't. I did, I did the same thing the other day. So I go to undelete it. First, I have to go through all these five digit numbers because every time I log into my email through iHeartMedia to prevent uh, hacking, you have to do like the verification code every time, which is fine. But then I'm having to go through all these different like five digit numbers trying to figure out which one's the tax uh, number. So I'm sitting in the waiting area and then I finally find it. I recover the text, blah, blah, blah. Which, by the way, the whole recover the, the whole recover the text thing is going to ruin relationships. They're going to be like, "Let me see the the uh, deleted text." Messages. I didn't even know we could do that until you just said that. I'll right show now. you afterwards. Yeah, it's a, do. it's a whole thing. So I go to undelete the tax return. It's not at that location. Oh, and it was at seven a.m. Oh my gosh! Not even a time I'd. I would be up. The only reason I would ever be up at 7 a.m. is because I'm producing Pat and Aaron on 95.3 WDAE, but I'm not. I Like, before I worked morning radio, when I did Beckles and Rutcher, and then when I worked at the other radio company, unless I was working for the morning show at the other radio company, I was never up at that time. So I don't know how I selected 7 a.m. Yeah. So to me, that recognized that I needed to, like, smell the roses more and, like, relax because I don't. First of all, it was not even at the exact location. It was at 4th Pavilion, which I've never been to. And then the 7 a.m. thing, not even 10 a.m. If it was 10 a.m. there, you go, okay, you clicked on the wrong location. Right. But when you mark it as 7 a.m., I was like, all right, I need to relax. How many of us have done this? I do this all. I literally did this the other day. 
Really? Yeah, I had a confirmation and normally I screenshot every like text confirmation that comes in from like an appointment. And for some reason, this one, I'm like, ah, it's fine. I'm just going to delete it. I deleted it. And then of course I show up to the place and they're like, did you get the text confirmation? And I'm like, why, why would I have deleted this? But now I know how to, I can <laughs> potentially retrieve the text message and you'll show me after and the show. The best part is then the H&R block that I didn't go to this morning is calling me while I'm in the waiting room <laughs> of the other H&R block. And I'm like, Ugh. they're it, like, where are you at? Yeah. And I felt bad. Cause then I began to think like, <laughs> 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 what if let's say her name is Gertrude. Cause she's another older woman. I'm like, what if Gertrude like didn't want to get up early in the morning, oh. but saw the appointment. Cause it's seven. So then I'm hoping that she was an um, early riser. So, so that happened. Everything happens for a reason. You ended up at the one you ended up at. No, I I know that, but everything that was, got done in twenty minutes. Unbelievable, though. I was like, oh okay. wait, so we can file our taxes right now? Get it done, because then you'll get your tax return within twenty one days if you are getting a return. Ooh, I need that like ASAP. Yeah, that was why I went in when I saw file your taxes on uh, TikTok, and it was like beginning tomorrow, like four days ago. I was like, okay, I'm doing that now because they said they can come even sooner, and I think so few Americans are doing it that I expect to have it in eight days. Like, I think it's going to be that quick because I don't think. Darn! I just realized last year I was working in Spain, so I probably won't get to claim anything. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Also, I'm never going to do my own taxes. I always do hnrblock.com. Like I've never gone in person, but it, it's so easy. The last however many years I've done it, I've always gone online and they save your information. It's super quick and easy. Ugh. And this is not sponsored. No, I just go to HR Block. I go to the wrong ones, the wrong time. And I go, <laughs> here's my paperwork. Fill it out. I'm Help done in 20 out. minutes. Only thing that's annoying is you don't get the full return because they have to keep some of it. But I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Normally, though, I get like a child tax credit and I am going to miss out on that because I worked in Spain last year. So I, I probably can't even file taxes or maybe I can. I'll have to look. I would suggest you call H&R Block or somebody who is an expert on that and not just assume right. with the IRS. Always ask the pros. I would double and triple check because you don't want to have anything come in the mail from the IRS. Is the IRS listening to this right now? The IRS is just such a negative vibe. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but... What does IRS stand for? Who knows? Isn't it internal revenue? Yeah. Something like that? I don't... I just said, yeah, like I knew, but I didn't. That makes sense, though. Internal revenue something. To me, if you work at the IRS, you're just the most boring person ever, or you're cool with making money and just sitting behind a cubicle the rest of your life. It just seems like a soulless job. Hmm. Like, I'm sure they what do are, have Employee Appreciation Day where they bring Hungry Howie's Pizza. Hungry Howie's Pizza. I'll pass. I'm more of a Joey Brooklyn's girl. Have you had Top Slice downtown? We need to go. No, but... I know I like to call him Joey. I don't know what. Yeah, his I don't name's know not Joey, though. The guy at yeah. Joey Brooklyn. I'm pretty sure it's Andy, but he hooks up the pizza all the time. He does that for me, too, because when I worked at my old radio company, we used to have a lot of gigs. I said company like it was my company. At my old radio job, we had a lot of promotion gigs at Janice Live, so we would get pizza, and we would order it from there, and then he also listened to the old morning show I worked with. So, like, he'll give me a deal. I'll go there. I don't really get yeah. as, as drunk as I used to. Right. But, like, I was on, like, three Jack and Cokes, and I was with my friend in downtown St. Pete. So, that like was three, my old Ryan. Like, three weeks ago. And I uh, I walked in, and he goes, Sup, Poppy? And he goes, how about all of this for 15 bucks? And it was, like, a great deal. And I was like. He's the best. When I used to go there back in the day when I would party and I lived downtown, um, he, I would just walk in, I would skip the line. Everyone that was waiting in line would be so mad and he yeah. would just hand me a free box of pizza and I would leave. You know, what's the best part about that? Shout out. The bathroom. Oh, okay. What's up with the bathroom? Think about it. So for people that are, are you pretend, not, you pretend you're using the bathroom. No, no, no. Let me explain. So for people that are listening that don't even know what Joey Brooklyn's is, it's a, it's the best pizza in St. Pete. 
but it's in downtown St. Pete. So they've renovated it, and I don't even know. It's a country bar next door now, which, ugh. It used to be like a hip-hop slash EDM club. I think it was, I forget the name of it. But it's the downtown St. Pete area, and it's like it's like set up in a square. It's like four different it's roads. It's next to Janus Live. It's right next to Janus Live, which is a concert hall, and it has a bunch of bars. And now they're like changing it. And the bar next to the other bar is going to become like a disco bar and all Back this. to Janice. What, I mean, back to Joey. Tell me what's happening no, in the just, bathroom. I'm just describing. Oh. So all these bars, there's a point to this. All these bars have bouncers and the bars are busy. So when you would go to the bathroom, there would be the longest line to take a piss at the club. Mm-hmm. And even one of my friends had an arrest because he was too drunk to go into one of the clubs and he walked in and he he's a very muscular man and he he broke the porta potty cuz they were trying to pull him and he was holding on to it oh. and then he had to like tell his wife this was like 7 years ago it was very awkward when you walk into Joey Brooklyn's you order the pizza and nobody is thinking there's a bathroom there so if you've drank like 5 to 6 beers yeah cuz you got to think when I, when I've gone to downtown St. Pete over the years in my early 20s of drinking a lot, I go through liquid very fast. So if I'm chugging beers and I'm getting drinks bought for me because I'm being recognized for working on a show, all of a sudden I think all that's adding up. And you're like a girl. Like you're getting free drinks and living the dream. And so is your point, wrap this up, Ryan, is your point that you can go to the Joey Brooklyn's bathroom? Because this is a very- Don't you don't <laughs> you ever insult the Joey Brooklyn's bathroom. It I'm is the just... most underrated thing in downtown St. Pete. Okay. Because so you me... order a slice of pizza and you can go to we the We should the reach out to him and see if he wants to sponsor our show with pizza. Because we could have a slice of pizza every time we have this show and that could be our payment. Pizza- is the best food when you're drunk. I mean, pizza in general. If you, again, I love this question. Dying food, last food on earth, you're about to die. What's your meal? Medium rare porterhouse and mashed I potatoes. Think, damn. I was thinking, I would do potatoes au gratin, like cheesy, like Ugh. scalloped potatoes. Gross. But like a great, but the steak has to be worth it. Because I hate when you go, I recently was at this restaurant. The steak was like 60 bucks for the cut. And it honestly wasn't that great. I'm like, talking like, about going to like meat market or... Fleming's Capital or any of those Grill fancy places. Too. Yeah, I love Fleming's. Because if I'm having a, a last meal, I'm not asking but for, you know. Uh, I would be fine with pizza too. Or if my grandmother, like, you know, like if my last, if she's still around, I'd probably do one of her meals to like eat it for the last time. Like she makes a great Italian cannelloni from scratch, which is like almost like a stuffed shell. It has ricotta cheese and like spinach on the inside with like, homemade tomato sauce on top anyways it's delicious so i don't know how this tell me what this relationship is called so i'm related to my aunt my aunt is my dad's sibling yeah her husband being my uncle right his mom and dad are from italy yes and they made the best like appetizer homemade pizza ever and she was She's alive right now. She's a saint, but she never, ever gives out her recipe. So there's something within each family from Italy where they have a recipe. Because I feel like other cultures kind of recycle the same recipe. But I feel like when you're from Italy, you have your own setup. That's it. And my so the way my grandmother on my dad's side makes pizza is different from the way my mother's father my no no made made pizza and it's sad because like my grandfather passed away um like 9 years ago now actually february 4th will be his an anniversary of his death sorry that was a little morbid but anyways back to pizza he made the most amazing pizza and what's sad is like Yes, he has showed us, but once that person passes, it never quite tastes the same. And it's so sad that I'm like, oh, I'm never going to taste that pizza. Oh, it's just. I had the same thing happen. My second cousin worked at a place called, um, I don't want to say the name of it unless people are listening in Illinois and I don't want them to tell the place. There was a place right by my house growing up that made thin crust pizza. Yeah. And my cousin died like three years ago. I forget what he died of. He was pretty young. He was like 62 and he died. And he was the one that made that pizza since 1989. Damn. And everybody had the recipe, 
but it's like and B. Ne- it's like B plus. It was like A plus when he did it, yeah. and it's not because I'm living in a past. There's something with the cheese where it's not as like. I don't know. It's not different. The same. The, you know, I'm going to quote Kim Kardashian here. Why? She says, you can steal the recipe and make the sauce, but it won't quite taste the same. Oh. I'm paraphrasing here, but that's how it is. You can have the recipe, you can make the sauce, but it won't quite taste the same. But I love a good that's pizza. That's your favorite quote by Kim Kardashian? Yeah, actually, that would be my favorite one. It makes sense. Mine is, oh, God. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy Hour will be right back. Do you get what I did there? Yeah, I got it. Did you watch it? Have you ever seen it? Nope, but I knew what you were talking about because you are Ryan Hoppy, so your mind goes there. Yeah, it does. You know who else thinks about it? Men at all times. And you know who this segment's being sponsored by? Rich Keeley. I'm going there on Thursday. The hair is starting to get a little long. I love it. I need to cut it. But then again, You don't want to do the soccer swoop again? (sighs) What I need to do with my hair... When I go there, I want him to cut it differently because I don't want to have the same army haircut. Because everybody liked my haircut that I had six, seven weeks ago. Yeah, I loved it. But I don't want to keep doing that forever because I had the same hair before. And that's the good part about going to Rich Keeley is that he is going to be able to help me manifest haircut. It's not like... 100%. It's not like going to Great Clips. You know what I think your hair could use? It's the texture of your hair. So we need like a good like manly hair paste or or what do they call that stuff? Clay? No. It's like a man... I have some in my backpack It's not a gel. It's like, is that it? Okay, what do we got? What's it called? Is it a styling cream? Yeah, like I feel like just some texture in there would just like be night and day. Well, I brought this because when we take a picture after the show to promote that we're recording. By the way, I forgot to mention, live from Alessia's house, we are hanging out (laughs) doing happy hour. Yeah. We're in my crib today. You know the one thing about being at my house that's hard when recording a podcast? What? My OCD kicks in. Why? And I'm the di- because this is just how my brain and body operates. So I start looking around at all of the things that I could be fixing. And it's like so minute. Like, for instance, you see that paper towel roll over there? Yeah. Okay. Like, I have the urge to go over and just, like, turn it so that the extra paper towel... <sighs> isn't like hanging loose and so like it's hard to focus gee i'm glad you're all in on the show yeah it's hard to focus because there's so many things this is why it's hard to work from home it, i mean it's a blessing to work from home but then i start looking around i'm like oh my gosh i have laundry i have this why, i have that why would it not be a blessing to work from home you don't have to make small talk yeah i mean i guess you have to make small talk on zoom i vacuum like 15 times a day i do it about 15 times a year i need to work on that more Anyway. We'll get you a cordless vacuum. It'll be easy. Sounds like a plan. RichKBarber.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Well, it was good while it lasted. Didn't mean to press that. 856-49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. Actually, before I had you on the show, I wanted to fill time, so I used to have clips from cartoons as my like rejoiners on top of the rejoiners so for the longest time i used to come back with this well it was good while it lasted i guess but sheriff the glory hole is the pride and joy of dougal county fella found an even older glory hole two towns over lord knows i ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this such an elegant concept a simple lowly hole to commemorate his glory and then somebody sent me a message about three weeks ago saying, you suck at radio because once you added your co-host, then you were able to multiply your, uh, you know, listens. I don't think that was the case. I no. think it was, I was spending 30 seconds playing the same clip in every show. That yeah. and it's like a match made in heaven. You have to find the right one. Kind of like a marriage, right? It's like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Yeah, I used to play... I mean, it was funny when I was 25, but Keep now looking classy. back on it. Yeah. 
Keep it classy. We're upgrading ourselves right now. I'm working on being classy, but sometimes I just not. I just don't want to be classy. No. But then when you're not classy, then you're on bad vibrations. There are such things as truth. being overly classy, though. Like, ooh, look at me. Like, you don't have to look presentable every day. You just have to look good. You know what I mean? Somebody that <laughs> always looks good is hiding something. I feel that you dress for how you want to feel. And it's been hard for me because I, I don't know how everyone else is doing out there, but I have lost some weight this last year. None of my clothes fit me. And I also have my whole wardrobe right now. My whole closet is full of like winter clothes, which are eventually going to wean out. And I'm going to have to start filling it with like some spring warm weather Florida clothes. But, um, yeah, it's hard because I want to dress my best, but all my clothes are big on me, but Do I don't want to go shopping right now because mama has to save money for the kids. Over the last year, have you quit drinking less and less? I am not a big drinker. Were you in the last year when you were a little heavier? Because I no, quit drinking in August. Yeah. And I've lost 20 pounds because I don't drink beer anymore. I actually started losing weight. That, please listen if this is if you are a woman in particular because this changed my life. But um, I started losing weight because I went to go see a functional medicine doctor in Tampa. Her name is Dr. Kathleen. She is insane. She's amazing. Like, I've never had a doctor sit down and give me so much of their time before. But she found out that my hormones are completely off. So she put me on natural supplements to get my hormone levels back to normal where they should be. And since my body has been functioning better with those, I have literally just dropped, I think like 30 pounds in like two months, like a lot of weight, a lot of weight that I was like stuck with for a while. It creeps me out when you lose that much weight because I've lost that. And then I'm like, it's almost like I'm trying to self-sabotage myself because you begin with the goal that you want to lose weight. And then when you do it, you're like, well, what's the next goal? And I will say I didn't like work out any different. I didn't change my diet necessarily. It really was just like getting my body to function where it should be. Now, I will just throw this out there, but I won't go into too much depth about this. Yeah. But I knew something was off with my body for a while. And I would go see doctors and they would run blood tests. And this could be you guys. They come back. The blood test comes back. And it's they, the doctor says, everything's normal. You're fine. Well, just so you guys are aware, there is more extensive blood work that a doctor could do. So Dr. Kathleen does more extensive blood work, looking at numbers that traditional blood work doesn't look at. And that's how she was able to find these inconsistencies in my body. So that was a mouthful, but that's what has been going on with me. Dudes, just don't drink as much beer. If you want to get drunk, just drink Jack and Coke. Because it really adds up. Eight beers, man, you got about 900 calories. And you think, too, like not just drinking, but like last year living in Spain, I, wa I didn't have a car. I walked everywhere. So I thought a year of walking, I would lose some weight. And because my body was not functioning where it should have been with my hormones, I didn't budge. I didn't budge a half a pound, Ryan. Oh, wow. So, so if you are having trouble losing weight, definitely go see Dr. Kathleen in, in Tampa. All right. What do we got in the news? I sent Alrighty. you a bunch of clips. I yes. sent you so much. I was sitting in the waiting room of the H&R block I was not supposed to be at sending you this. Yeah. So the one I want to start with is Ginger Duggar. Do you guys remember the Duggar family? How Nin could you forget? 19, 20, 21 kids and counting. I don't remember what number we left off at, but Ginger Duggar is now an adult and she's speaking out about the cult-like religion that she thought she would be killed if banned music accidentally came on the radio. So based, yeah, Ryan, did you have something? I feel like there's this attitude where we think cults are only like the one from the 90s where they all killed themselves. Mm -hmm. Real, people don't want to say it because they want to believe in Jesus and God, but sometimes religious people like them, it's a cult. A hundred percent. So this is coming, I am speaking from somebody as a Christian. I am obviously not a pastor, but this is my own opinion that there are extremists in every situation. So the Duggards believed, the family raised their children to believe that certain television, television shows and um, music should be monitored because it was produced by the devil. It was, it was not good for their children to listen to. I, as a parent and a Christian, would say, I agree. There are certain shows and music I don't want my ch child to listen to. All being Christian aside, just as a parent, there are certain things that I'm like, that's not appropriate for my kid. They took it to a level based on their religious beliefs that was 
uh, Ginger reveals, Ginger Duggar says that she was not allowed to listen to rock music and she was so terrified that if rock music accidentally came on the radio, she was led to believe that God would actually kill her. So she is uh, framing her parents now as being in a cult. She said she was raised um, with trauma and uh, incredible fear. Yeah. Almost like a cult. I could see parents taking it to that extreme. You know, they probably thought they were protecting their child based on their extreme beliefs. They don't believe their beliefs are extreme. But now that Ginger is older and able to make those decisions for herself, she is, uh, her opinion is that it was extreme and it was cult-like. Happy hour. Happy hour.